Last week, I compiled data on what your favorite read of 2023 was so far. 738 of you responded to some polls that I ran, and I put the numbers together and made a video about it. This past week, I've been collecting data on who your favorite writer of all time is, and I have that to share with you today. I ran a poll on Instagram. I posted on TikTok, inviting you all to tell me your favorite writer in the comments section. Made a post on YouTube about this as well. And in all, there were 1,109 votes. Out of those 1,109, there were 241 unique writers. I'm William, I'm the author of a novella called Fumes, and I'll be putting out book-related content on this channel indefinitely. I'm a lifelong reader and will continue to be. If you've been getting something out of these videos I've been making, definitely consider subscribing. Liking the video too goes a long way. Okay, so out of those over 240 unique writers that are on the list, most of them only got one or two votes, and there were definitely some surprises on here. Specifically, all but 47 of those 240 plus writers got one or two votes. Some of the ones that really stand out to me on this list are David Foster Wallace. I would have thought there would have been more votes for that guy. Cervantes also only got a couple of votes. Shakespeare only got two. F. Scott Fitzgerald. F. Scott Fitzgerald, I feel like, definitely got snubbed here. I. I am a little upset that more of you didn't vote for him. One of my personal favorites, Jonathan Franzen, only got one vote. Sad. Alice Munro with only one is a tragedy. A real tragedy. I would have thought at least maybe some of you Canadian readers out there would have given her some love, but no. There are some fun ones on here too. We've got Taylor Swift. We've got Machiavelli. Some of these I'm wondering like how serious they are. But yeah, in all, there are about 200 writers who only got one or two votes. There is a massive tie at number 30. There are 17, wait no, 18 writers who got the same number of votes there. I'm glad to see Carver in the mix here. I would have thought that he would have gotten fewer votes, honestly. RF Kuang, I would have expected to receive more votes than she did. But to be more than a couple people's absolute favorite writer of all time is an achievement. In the interest of time, I'm gonna skip ahead to number 20 because that's where things start to get interesting. Number 20 got five votes and they just keep going up, not exponentially, but quite a bit from there. The number one writer on the list got almost 200 votes, just to give you some frame of reference here. So number 20, the writer at number 20 is Margaret Atwood. And I regrettably have not read anything by her yet, though, I've obviously heard good things. There have been some great adaptations from the books that she's written as well. So I'll definitely need to get to some of her books soon. I'm gonna go through these next 10 a little quickly and save a little bit more time for the top 10 on the list. Toni Morrison came in at number 19. Her reputation precedes her, but if you'd like some recommendations for where to start, I would recommend The Bluest Eye or Sula. Both of them are a little shorter. The Bluest Eye is her first novel ever. Sula is my personal favorite. Her most well-known has to be Beloved. That is an extremely influential novel and one that you should add to your list, especially if you're looking to study American literature. At number 18 was Oscar Wilde. And of all of the writers on this list, people had the most extra things to say about Oscar Wilde. Definitely those of you who love Oscar Wilde, love Oscar Wilde. Number 17 was Franz Kafka of Metamorphosis fame. Shout out to Playboy Cardi. Number 16 was James Baldwin. Number 15 was the founder of fantasy, the legend himself, J.R.R. Tolkien. Haruki Murakami came in at number 14. I have not read any of Murakami's novels cover to cover. A lot of people clearly love him. I like what I have read. I've read what I talk about when I talk about running, which is a play on what we talk about when we talk about love by Raymond Carver. But Murakami's running book is one of the best running books I've ever read in my life, if not the best, which probably says good things about the rest of his work. A lot of people say things about Norwegian Wood. I haven't read it, but I hear it's good. Leo Tolstoy came in at 13, which was a little bit higher, I think, than I was expecting to see him listed. Obviously, he's one of the greats, but I wouldn't have thought that so many people would consider him to be their absolute favorite writer. I've tried to read War and Peace a couple of times. I haven't finished it yet, but I'll let you know when I do. Number 12, and this was a pleasant surprise for me, was Charles Bukowski. 
if you're unfamiliar with Bukowski, he's something of a legend. A lot of his writing has to do with poorer Americans, and he's one of the most original American writers out there. He's very charismatic, he's very opinionated, and the people who love him clearly love him, or else he wouldn't have been ranked so highly. And at number 11, we have Gabriel Garcia Marquez. If you're unfamiliar with Marquez, he's a lot of writers' favorite writer. He's a Colombian novelist and short story writer, most famous for 100 Years of Solitude. That would be the one to read if you're going to pick only one novel to read by him. Okay, and here we are at the top 10. Coming in at number 10 was William Faulkner, who's one of my personal favorites. He's written tons of novels that are well worth your time. A lot of them are very difficult, but I had this experience with him and I saw in comments that a lot of other people did too. He's the main writer who taught me that just because writing is dense doesn't mean that it's boring. I learned how to love elegantly crafted literature by reading William Faulkner. I had a great experience reading Light in August in high school and proceeded through the rest of his work from there. One of the most gnarly, but ultimately extremely rewarding works by Faulkner is The Sound and the Fury. If you haven't picked up that one or tried at least the first few pages of it, check it out, trust me, it is worth it if you plow through those first 50 pages or so. Number nine on the list, she's one of my favorite writers now. I wouldn't have been able to say this a couple of years ago because I only recently read The Secret History and The Goldfinch, but but yeah, no. Number nine is Donna Tartt, the great Donna Tartt of Greenwood, Mississippi. Her first novel was The Secret History, which she published when she was, I believe, 28. She went to Bennington College in Vermont and created a fictional college called Hampton College, which is also in Vermont, and crafted a story around some spooky stuff that went on uh, in real life near Bennington College. I don't wanna give anything away about The Secret History, but just read it if you haven't, it's good. After The Secret History, she published The Little Friend, which I haven't read yet. I'll be reading that pretty soon though. And most recently, in 2013, she published The Goldfinch, which won the Pulitzer Prize. Stephen King is number eight on the list. I feel like it's pretty hard to have not read anything by him, I've read at least half a dozen of his books at this point. One of my personal favorites is Cujo. I really liked that one because it was super dark and not extremely short, but definitely finishable. I read Cujo in late high school. I have some pretty strong memories of reading that in the summer. The book definitely hits harder than the movie did. At number seven, and this actually surprised me, I wouldn't have thought that as many people would be so high on this writer as they were, is Virginia Woolf. Virginia Woolf is number seven on the list. To the Lighthouse stands out to me as one of her finer works. I had to read that novel in college and loved it. Virginia Woolf unlocked so much for so many writers. She was incredible at getting at the interiority of her characters and most famously, at least to me, was really good at flitting between different characters' interiority. The way that she would construct scenes and construct novels was extremely unique. And so she's interesting, not just because her writing is compelling, but because she also achieved a lot of historical firsts. Number six on the list is probably the most imitated writer of all time. He had a great deal of influence on tons and tons of writers who came after him. Ernest Hemingway. If you're looking for a good place to start with Mr. Hemingway, I would suggest that you try The Sun Also Rises. That's a novel that's a good length. It has a really intriguing cast of characters who play off of each other really well and isn't too much of a commitment. The Old Man in the Sea is super short, so you could start there. I love that one. Extremely punchy, extremely efficient, not a word lost. And if you want something longer by Hemingway, I read A Farewell to Arms and loved it. I'm going to be rereading that one in the not too distant future. I read it about this time last year and I'm already, while the season is changing from summer to fall, really feeling that one. I'm gonna have to resist the temptation to not dive back in because I've got way too many things to read. Number five was Camus, who wrote The Stranger. And Admittedly, I think that some of the books that I've recommended in the past had a pretty strong influence on this top 10. Obviously, I've recommended a lot of books by Hemingway. I've recommended The Stranger by Camus as well. 
If you haven't read that one, the first sentence is Maman died today, which is like the main character's mother dying. And the rest of the novel unfolds in a really surreal way. The philosophy of the book is one of the main highlights. The Stranger hits really hard for a lot of people, especially if you're in like your late teens or early 20s. I highly recommend that one. Number four, and this was probably the biggest surprise to me, was Kurt Vonnegut. And Vonnegut is clearly a super capable writer. I loved Slaughterhouse Five, which is still, I think, the only book of his that I've read cover to cover. He was super prolific, like tons and tons of novels to Vonnegut's name. I didn't ask you all to add additional comments after you said who your favorite writer was, but so many people just volunteered extra things that they loved about Vonnegut and it was really beautiful to see. I've heard really good things about Breakfast of Champions, but if you're one of those Vonnegut fans, let me know in the comments which of his novels are your favorites and which you think people should try first. Maybe which of his novels are most accessible. And now we have arrived at the top three. Number three on the list, household name. I wasn't surprised to see him make it this high up. John Steinbeck. I've read most of Steinbeck's works of Mice and Men, The Pearl, Cannery Row, The Grapes of Wrath, but I have been hearing so many good things about East of Eden that I went ahead and ordered it. Lots of people seem to think that East of Eden is one of the greatest American novels ever, and I can't beg to differ until I've read it myself. I always remember hearing the most about The Grapes of Wrath when I was in grade school, especially. That always seemed to me like the most well-known novel by Steinbeck. And maybe a lot of people like East of Eden because it's his longest book. Anyway, East of Eden, coming soon. Number two on the list is my personal favorite writer, and I've said a lot of things about him in other videos, so I would refer you to those if you wanna get a lot of detail on him, Cormac McCarthy. I'll just quickly add that among his most accessible novels are The Road, No Country for Old Men, and All the Pretty Horses. You might start with those. And his greatest, but also probably one of his least enjoyable novels, is Blood Meridian. You'll hear a lot about that one as well. The number one writer on the list, I kind of suspected would be number one, but I didn't think that he would get as many votes as he did. Well over a hundred of you voted for Dostoevsky. Here again, maybe some videos that I've made in the past about him had some influence on all of these votes, but I mean, Dostoevsky was such a clear number one here that I don't think that I was the main influence on him getting the most votes. If you're a reader, you've heard a lot about his novels. Crime and Punishment is up there among his most famous. The Idiot, The Brothers Karamazov. Notes from Underground, though, is one of his shortest works. And it's kind of dense, but you can get through it relatively quickly. I would recommend Notes from Underground, but maybe not as a place to start. I think with Dostoevsky, you kind of just need to dive into one of his longer novels because that's where most of the good stuff is. I'm personally partial to Crime and Punishment, but since there are a lot of you Dostoevsky lovers out there, just let people know in the comments what your favorite novel by him is and why. Thank you all for participating. I really appreciate it. This video took me a long time to put together because I had to manually crunch a lot of the data. So if you enjoyed this, if you got something out of it, I would really appreciate a like. Share this video if you feel so inclined. And of course, consider subscribing if and only if you got something out of this and would like to see more book-related content by me. Hopefully you learned something from this video. I certainly learned a lot about all of you and what sorts of videos you would enjoy in the future. So again, thank you for participating. Lots more content coming soon. Happy reading, and I'll see you in the next one.